why does this model have dynamics? Where's the dynamics coming from here? Think about it. Well, it's coming from you have to sacrifice capital. You have to sacrifice consumption, I'm sorry, to get capital. And you don't want to, like, starve yourself to build up your capital stock too quickly. And so what's going to happen is if there, let's say I start with a low capital stock. Let's think about it. Well, look, oh, we have to do our steady state. What's the steady state of this problem? Well, what's, in, what's true in steady state? Go back to this equation. What's true in steady state? Well, u prime at tau is going to be equal to u prime at t. So there comes equal consumption. So that's going to fall out. This is just going to be a constant. So our steady state is going to be f prime of k minus delta over r equals 1. That's going to be our steady state. I'm sorry, over rho, sorry. Over rho equals 1, which implies f prime of k equals rho plus delta. Okay? It's going to tell me that the marginal product of capital has to be equal to the rate of time preference plus the depreciation rate. That's it. The marginal product capital equilibrium is only going to depend on these two numbers. What's your rate of time preference and what's the depreciation rate? How does that happen? What does that mean? So let's say, for example, go back to my previous way of looking at the world. Let's say we had a steady state. So my steady state, here's T, here's K, here's C, here's Y, and here's I. That's my steady state. Okay, that's my steady state. What would happen if suddenly we were to improve technology in this world? We were to say double F. We became twice as productive. What would happen to the steady state? What would happen to the steady state return? I, oh, I got to do that. I got to do F prime. Think about it. What would happen? Well, what would happen initially to F prime if we just doubled F? We just multiplied F by 2. Well, what would happen to F prime if I doubled F? Well, K isn't going to jump, right? K's got to stay right where it was. The, the minute after the function changed, we would have the same K. So F prime would double. And then what would happen over time? Well, where's our new steady state going to be? Well, it's, it's going to be right back where it was. So we would then build up the capital stock and gradually bring F prime back, right? So our K would gradually increase until we reached our new equilibrium. Okay, Everybody agrees with that? That's what would happen. And of course, what would happen to y? Well, what would happen to y? Well, i would actually double initially to x, right? That is, y would double because we became twice as productive. We would produce twice as much output per person initially. And then what would happen over time? We would go even higher as we added more capital. Output per person would rise even more. But the return on capital would come back to where it was. So we'd have this very elastic and indeed perfectly elastic long run supply of capital. That is, the supply of capital in this model is perfectly elastic, right? Because if the return on capital goes up, we just keep investing and investing until the return to capital comes back down to rho plus delta. We have a perfectly elastic supply of capital in the long run. In the very short run, of course, we have a perfectly inelastic supply of capital. 
capital is fixed from where we got whatever K was yesterday is the same K we have to start today, okay? And the reason we have this drawn out dynamics is because we don't want to consume too little in the interim, right? All right, people understand that? It's going to limit the rate at which we increase. Now, one thing that's interesting in this model is we're not really going to be able to say which way C is going to go in this model because there's conflicting forces. On the one hand, you're richer. You're now twice as productive. You want to consume more. On the other hand, it pays to wait, pays to invest, so you want to reduce C. So C actually could go up or down. We don't know which way C is going to go, of course. I, of course, is going to have to go up because we have to build up the capital stock. So I is going to jump up, all right, and then which way I goes, but we're going to go to a new steady state on I, okay? Now for C, we don't know. We could either go down or up, but we know eventually C is going to have to go up, right? Eventually C is going to rise. But we may initially reduce C, we may initially increase C, Depends on how much curvature there is to our utility function, right? Depends on how willing we are to cut back on consumption. If our utility function is real curvy, we may actually increase C. We might say, geez, I'm richer. That's going to dominate this substitution effect toward consuming less, okay? All right? This model is known as the neoclassical growth model. Now, it's not a growth model the way I wrote it down. It's a levels model. But the Leo classical growth model is a levels model that's been kind of jiggered to be a growth model, right? We just kind of added this technological change or whatever we wanted to turn it into a growth model. This is really the essence of the neoclassical growth model. The idea is we have a much more elastic long-run supply of capital, in this case, perfectly elastically supplied. 